Hey, 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 everybody. Praise the Lord. I pray that all is well with you. I pray that everybody has had a blessed week. Um, even if you are going through something, just remember this. God is faithful and God will see you through. Amen. And so I'm not going to be before you all long this evening. I just want to give you a word um, that the Lord has placed in my spirit um, to give to you. And so I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I'm going to wait you know, a couple of minutes before I get started here, but tonight we're going to be talking about faith again. Yes, we are, um, because we're entering into a time and into a season where a lot of the saints, our faith is being tested, um, our faith is on trial, and we have to trust and believe in the God that we serve, the God that we uh, claim that we love. We have to really, you know, believe and trust in him and know that he is for us. The scripture declares to us, it says that if God be for us, then who can be against us? And so I'm not going to be, you know, before you very long tonight. Uh, I want to go ahead and go to the book of Matthew, the 14th chapter. Um, that's where we're going to spend our time this evening in Matthew chapter 14. And we're going to go to verse number 22. Matthew chapter 14, verse number 22. I pray that everybody has had a blessed week. Um, you know, some of us, um, and I'm saying us because I am included, some of us are going through some things where we need the Lord to come through, but we can be rest assured that we may not be able to see the manifestation of what it is that he has promised us yet, but we know this. We know that if God be for us, then who can be against us? We know that he is a doctor in the sick room. We know that he is a lawyer in the courtroom. We know that He'll never leave us nor forsake us. And so we're going to go ahead and go to Matthew chapter 14, uh, verses 22 through 33. Um, so verses 22 through 33 is where we're going to be coming from this evening. And so I want to talk about the calm in the storm. Notice I didn't say the calm before the storm. I said the calm in the storm. And so we'll go ahead and go a little bit into detail on that. Um, but I am going to go ahead here um, and wait about another minute or so. I'm going to say a word of prayer and then we're going to go ahead and jump right into the word. OK, so um, if you come in, go ahead and share this out. If you're watching the playback, uh, then God bless you as well. Um, but I believe that, you know, many of us, we are in a time and we're in a place where, you know, we have sung about God. We've danced about God. You know, we've served. OK. Well, now we need to know who he is because it's one thing to know. Mm, watch this. It's one thing to know about who God is based off of what somebody told you. But it's a whole nother thing for you to know who God is by experiencing him for yourself. And so when, when we see that uh, um, in this story, we're going to be talking about Jesus walking on the water. And yes, you know, I know that some of y'all heard this in Sunday school, but it may have not clicked. So we're going to go ahead and talk about it again. And so we're going to come from Matthew chapter 14. OK, Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. And so it's about 559. I'll wait another minute or so and then we'll go ahead and get started. Um, but before that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now, Lord, to say thank you. We thank you for this day that you've blessed us with. We thank you for your love. We thank you, God, for your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for your mercies towards us. Lord God, we thank you for keeping us all week. Lord God, we thank you for being a God who comes through. Lord God, we may not see the promises all the time. Lord God, we may not see what it is that you've said. But Lord God, we trust and believe that if you said it, that it will come to pass. And so, Father, we say thank you. I pray and ask, Lord God, that you will let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you're my strength and you're my redeemer. I thank you, Lord, for these and for all things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and go to the book of Matthew. That's where I want to take you this evening, the book of Matthew, chapter 14. And we're going to go straight to verse 22. This is what the Bible says. It says, and straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. 
But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And the, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked unto the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore this thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. And they were in the ship, came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. And so I'm not going to be before you long. Listen, we, we already learned this story and when we was in Sunday school as kids. But I am going to say this. You, there's so much that you can take from this uh, story, this, this story of, of what happened when the disciples were in the storm, when the disciples were, um, the waves were tossed. They thought that they were going to die. You know, they thought that they were going to die. Now, watch this. Now, the first time that the, the uh, I think a couple of weeks ago when we were in, when we were having Bible study, I was taught from the story of when Jesus was asleep on the ship. And now we see that Jesus in another uh, story is walking on the water and the disciples are in the ship. And so we know that Jesus, watch this, when he was walking on the water, we read in this story that the water was boisterous. You know, there was waves everywhere. There were storms everywhere. And see, watch this. That just represents the situation. See, a lot of times when we look at our situation, it can be chaotic. But see, notice that it didn't say that Jesus was moved by the wind and the storm. It did not say that he was moved by all of those things. But watch this. It said that he was walking on the water. And so watch this. When Jesus is in the storm, all is well. I don't care what the storm is. I don't care what it is that you are going through. When Jesus is in the storm, all is well. And a lot of times, see, we want to pay attention to the storm when really we need to be paying attention to the storm ceaser. We remember Jesus had spoke to the storm um, in another passage and he said, peace be still. He said, peace be still. And so we have to know that when we are walking with Jesus, it does not mean that it's going to exempt us from life. And see, we, we have to remember and remind ourselves that all those that live godly shall suffer persecution. We also have to remind ourselves that he said he would never leave us nor forsake us. We also have to remind ourselves that Jesus is in control of everything. It does not matter what it is. It does not matter what the doctors say. It does not matter what people say. Jesus is in control. And when he's in control, then all is well. And I'm talking uh, to myself this evening. Let's go ahead and go to verse uh, number 23. I want to take you back there. It says, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Verse 24, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. So the disciples were on a ship in the middle of a storm. See, many times when you walk with Jesus, see, a lot of times, again, it does not exempt you from life. Sometimes we will go through storms. Some of us are in storms right now. Some of us are experiencing things that we've never experienced before. You know, I know that some of us are still experiencing what it is or whatever's going on with this COVID-19, whatever is going on in our personal lives outside of that. Some of us are experiencing storms right now, but we have to be rest assured that even though we go through the storm, that Jesus is with us. For he also said that when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. When you pass through the water, I will be with 
with you. And so we have to remember again that when Jesus was walking on the water, all was well. But see, watch this. When he was walking on the water, the disciples, they thought that it was a ghost. They thought that it was a spirit. They thought that it was a, they thought they didn't know that it was Jesus. Listen, when you are in a storm, and this is something that I'm going to say, if you don't remember anything else that I say this evening, remember this. When you are in a storm, it's important that you know who Jesus is. It's important that you are able to identify him. It's, and you may not see the solution right away, but you see his hand moving. You see him walking on the water. You see him standing out there and he say, come on, come on. And we, some of us are like Peter. When Jesus bids us to come, when Jesus tells us to come on, to come closer to him in the middle of the storm, we'll get out the boat. Yes. But some of us would rather stay in the boat and stay asleep. Some of us would rather stay in the boat and stay um, in that situation. Watch this, where we, we see the storm around us and we say, oh, well, I just want to get to know Jesus from uh, uh, just a comfortable view. I just want to get to know Jesus uh, from this, from that. You know, watch this. When you get to know the real Jesus, when you get to serve the real Jesus, a lot of times that causes you to come out of the boat. It causes you to come out of your comfort zone. It causes you to come out from among them and be separate. It causes you to come out from all of those things that you were once in. It causes you to come out from all of that things that were familiar. And we see in the Bible, see a lot of times in the scriptures, when you look at people that were following Jesus, that were teaching about the kingdom, that were uh, prophetically declaring God's word, you see that a lot of them were not liked. You see that a lot of them were not in comfortable situations. And see, we have to get, I'm, I'm going to share this. This is for all the Christians. We have to get out of the norm of, of, of worshiping and serving in a comfortable Christianity and serving in all these churches. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but see, watch this. For some people, for his called out ones, Jesus is calling them out into the mission field in order to go and to reach the lost sheep. Watch this. I'm going to share something else with you. Sometimes when you do that, you will go through a storm. People will stop talking to you. People won't like you. People won't agree with the, with everything that you say. But watch this. You need not be afraid. Just like Jesus told the disciples here, he said, you need not be afraid. He said, "I am, it is I, I am with you. And so I want to ask you this question this evening. How much more, how much more powerful would it have been had they been in the middle of the storm? And then they already knew who Jesus was without him having to identify himself. I'm going to go ahead and I want to ask you that question. If they knew who Jesus was and did not assume that it was a ghost, what would their reaction would have been? What, what would their reaction be? And I, and I want to say, and I want to say this when he's in the storm, all is well. See, but it did not mean that they were not uh, uh, looking at the situation, that they were not looking at the waves, that they were not looking at the ship being tossed to and fro. It does not mean that they were not looking at those things because those things were their circumstances. And see what the Lord is saying now is take your eyes off of your circumstance. It does not matter what it looks like. We know that he is in control. And I want to say, Say that because it's many times when we look at our circumstance, when we look at what it is that we're going through, see, many times we look at that and we begin to doubt God. And we are in a season now where we need not doubt God. We need to cling closer to him for the scripture says, draw nigh unto me and he would draw nigh unto you. You can find that um, in the New Testament. I'll post the scripture um, um, down below in the comments. It says, draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. And see, many of us, we don't want to draw nigh unto God, or some of us may not have been taught how to draw nigh unto God. But see, when we draw nigh unto God, a lot of times we leave behind some things that we're used to. Sometimes we leave behind some friendships. We leave behind relationships. We leave behind people. And you've got people in your life that if you do not leave them behind, instead of them becoming some, not somebody and something that propels you closer to God, 
then it becomes somebody or something that derails you from where he's trying to take you. You cannot take everybody with you where the Lord is trying to take you. And I don't know where he's trying to take you, but I know where he's taking me. And see, what we have to realize is that wherever he is taking us, it is a part of his plan. For he said in Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, he said, I know the plans that I have for you. He said, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. And so I want to share this with you. Your hope and your future is not in a car. It's not in a house. It's not in dead religion. It's not in dead traditions of man. It's not in promotions. It's not in anything except Jesus, because Jesus is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the end. And it starts and it ends with Christ. It starts and it ends with Christ. Let me go ahead and take you to back to the scriptures. Uh, let's go to the book of Isaiah. I want that's where I want to take you. Isaiah chapter 43. So I can back up some of the things that um, I have said already. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 43. And I want to take you to verse number two. I want to take you to Isaiah chapter 43 and verse two. This is what the scripture says. When thou pass through the waters, I will be with thee. And when thou and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And we know that whatever God says, that it will come to pass. Whatever God promises, he will perform. Watch this. Let me go ahead and share this with you. I'm going to go ahead and take you back to another scripture. Let's go to the book of Numbers. I want to take you to Numbers chapter 23 because we're going to go line upon line, precept upon precept. We're going to break this down so that even a child can understand what the word of the Lord is saying this evening. So the book of Numbers chapter 23, and I want to take you over to uh, verse number 19, Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. This is what the scriptures have to say to us. This is what it says. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So we can be rest assured that whatever the Lord has said, we can rest in it. Whatever the Lord has promised, we can believe it. It's better than a, a, a check that you take to the bank. Amen. Whatever the Lord has told you, whatever the Lord has said to you, not what you said to yourself. Not, no, no, no. Not what you said to yourself, but what the Lord said to you. Because, see, we have to be able to distinctly know the voice of God versus the voice of our own flesh against the uh, we have to know the voice of our uh, of our God, excuse me, um, as opposed to knowing uh, the voice of our flesh. And see, many of us, what we'll do is and, and, and we've all been guilty of this before. We will take the voice of our flesh. We'll take what our hearts desires want and we'll put God on it and we'll say, well, God said this. God said that. And we'll say that so that nobody will question it. And so many of us have been guilty of that before. But going back to what the lesson is talking about, there is a calm in the storm. And that calm is in none other than Jesus Christ. And so when we walk through the storm, when we are with God, all will be well. And I don't know what it is that you're facing. For some of you, it may be a health challenge. For some of you, it may be financial challenge. For some of you, you may be believing God to do something for you and bring something to pass in your life. It will happen in God's timing. And we need not worry but to trust him. And I'm preaching and I'm teaching to myself first. Amen. And so point number two is keep your eyes on Jesus. Let's go back to verse number 26. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Um, it says, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying it is a spirit. And they cried out in fear. And see, I'm going to stop there. When you're in the middle of a storm, you need not be afraid. But see, they were crying out in fear. They were not crying out to the most high God. And see, when you cry out in fear, watch this, you're operating in another spirit. Because the scripture says it clearly, it says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so that you know I'm telling you the truth, let's go ahead and take you to that scripture now. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1, um, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. 
Let's go ahead and see what the Bible says, because it does not matter what man says. It matters what the Bible says. The scripture declares that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so let's see what proceeds out of the mouth of God this evening. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, it says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let me read that to you again. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I want you to really take that and I really want you to chew on that uh, for the next couple of days and really think about what that means. Read that. Read 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Read that in the spirit and, and see what the Lord reveals to you. And so keep your eyes on Jesus. And so we go back to verse 27 of Matthew chapter 14. It says, but straightway Jesus spake unto them saying, be of good cheer. It is I be not afraid. It is I be not afraid. So Jesus was identifying that though they were in a storm and though the waves were crazy and though the boat was rocking, that he was with them. And see, I don't care if the boat is rocking. Listen, I'm in a situation right now. You in a situation right now where the boat may be rocking, but as long as you rocking with Jesus, you're going to be OK. He will see you through. He is a promise keeping God. He is a way maker. You know, we sing all these songs, I, I, and I'm convinced now from, from some of the behavior that I've seen, we sing all these songs about Jesus, we worship Jesus, we, we go to church, we do all these stuff, but we don't really know who Jesus is. Watch this. It's one thing to know church. It's another thing to know Jesus. It's, an, it's one thing to know religion. It's an entirely different thing to have a relationship with Christ. Now, yes, those are, you know, they work together. You know, don't get it twisted now. They work together, but you do need a relationship with Christ. Now, how do you get a relationship with Christ? You get a relationship with Christ by spending time with him, by spending time in your word, by spending time in prayer, by spending time really getting to know the characteristics of the Lord Jesus Christ through the scriptures. That's why the Bible tells us it says study to show yourself approved unto God. It didn't say, watch this, it didn't say study to go and show yourself approved to get a degree. Now, I'm not knocking my preacher friends that have degrees. I'm not, I, I mean, I think that that's a great accomplishment, but watch this. It said, study to show yourself approved unto God. You got a whole lot of people that got degrees and are displeasing to God. It says, a workman needing not be made ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So if he's saying it's rightly dividing the word truth, then there's a wrong way to divide the word truth. But that's a whole nother lesson. Amen. So keep your eyes on Jesus. And so we know that uh, in, in verse 28, Peter says, uh, he says, and the Lord, he says, Lord, if it be thou bid me to come unto thee on the water. So watch this. Jesus identifies himself already. He says, it is I be not afraid. And so when he identified himself, then what ended up happening was Peter, he had said those things. He said, Lord, if it is you, meaning that Peter still had a little bit of doubt in his heart. He had a little bit of doubt down there because he did not believe that Jesus was who he was based off of what he all had already said. And so he said, Lord, if it, if it is you, bid me to come to you on the water. And what do you think that Jesus did? Jesus said it plainly. He said, come on. And see, many of us, we are in situations now, or we've been in situations before where, you know, Jesus has identified and he said, I am here with you. I am for you. I'm going to fight for you. And we say, well, Lord, if it is you, then make this happen, Lord. If it is you, then make that happen. And see, some of us, <laughs> I call it the uh, the Gideon syndrome. The Gideon syndrome said, we're looking for all these confirmations. We're looking for all of this stuff. We're looking for all of these reassurances. Watch it. And yes, God does want to reassure us that he is with us. But watch this. We spend all that time looking for all of these little confirmations. And the Lord has already spoken. He's already spoken. And he already said that he is with you. He's already said that he is with you. Let me show you that in the scripture, okay? Let me take you to Deuteronomy. Let's go back to the Old Testament real quick. I want to take you to Deuteronomy real, real quick to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 31. Uh, Deuteronomy 31, and we are going to go to verse number six. 
This is what I want to do here. Deuteronomy 31 and 6. This is what the Bible says. It says, be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And so now you know that if God said it in his word, that you can rest in it. And see, many of us, we get to a point where when we're in our storm, we're just like Peter. Peter said, okay, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Jesus said, come on. And if I can use that in, in today's English, Jesus said, what you waiting on, bro? Come on. I'm out here. Come on. And so then when Peter began to go out to Jesus, what ended up happening when he went out to Jesus? When he went out to Jesus, he began to look around. He he began to look around and, and, and oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. When he, <laughs> when he began to look around, what happened? Logic kicked in. See, sometimes faith and logic, they be fighting one another because logic deals with your flesh, man. Faith deals with your spirit, man. That's why the apostle Paul said to walk in the spirit and you would not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And so we know that when he began to look around, he began to notice uh, his situation around him. He began to see that the waves were rocking the ship and he began to see that everything was looking chaotic. But then he said, here I am walking on this water, going to my Lord Jesus. I don't see nobody else, but I'm out here on these waves and about these waves though. And as he begins to look around, what ends up happening is he begins to sink. Let me share that with you in a way that makes sense. When you begin to look at your situation, and, I, and, I, and this is heavy for me. When you begin to look at your situation and you begin to look at it, you, you know, sometimes you feel that anxiety coming up. Sometimes you feel that fear coming up. Sometimes you feel those things that, uh, uh, you know, you should not feel those things begin to arise up again. And when you look at those things, what ends up happening is your situation begins to overtake you. And when your situation begins to overtake you, it's going to take you right out of the spirit into anxiety. It's going to take you right out of the spirit into the flesh. It's going to take you right out of the spirit into that very place that God was trying to avoid you going to. But what ended up happening, instead of trusting him, you kept your eyes on the tradition. Instead of trusting him, you kept your eyes on the situation. You kept your eyes on man. You kept your eyes on what folks wanted to see and what folks wanted to do. You kept your eyes on trying to please people. And see, let me share something with you about people. And this is not everybody, but if it applies to you, then cool. Let the Lord deal with you. If it does not apply, then let it fly. Some people are like shadows. You see them when it's bright and sunny and when it's dark and and gloomy, they're nowhere to be found. I'm going to share that with you again. Some people are like shadows. You see them when everything is bright and sunny, but when it's dark and gloomy, they are nowhere to be found. But then we just read that Jesus would never leave us nor forsake us. So if we have the comforts of Jesus Christ, knowing that he will never leave us nor forsake us, then my brother or my sister, why do we spend so much time putting weight and putting value in the opinions that other people give us? And some of the opinions that they give you are not even biblical. Let me share that with you with the scripture. Let's see what the most high God has to say about people like that. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 17, and I want to take you to verse 5. This is what the Lord, this is what the Lord has to say about people like that. It says, thus in verse 5, thus said the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Your heart cannot be with the Lord if you if you uh, are valuing the opinions of folks more than you're trusting in what the word of the Lord is saying or what the Lord God has said to you. And see, many times, and it does not mean that people's opinions are bad, but see, if that opinion does not line up with what God has told you, if that prophecy does not line up with the scripture, if that message does not line up with what thus said the Lord, then my brother or my sister, I would suggest that you pay attention to what the Lord says, because we know this, we know this, that heaven and earth will pass away, 
but his word will not pass away. And so many times we get so caught up in, in putting our trust in man. The Bible says it clearly. It says some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we will remember the name of the Lord, our God. And so I want to take you to another scripture. This is what happens uh, um, when we put our trust in man. Let's go to Isaiah chapter, uh, let's go to Isaiah chapter 30. That's another good one that I want to share with you tonight. Isaiah chapter 30. Amen. And so I'm going to take you to verse. Let's start at verse number one. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse one. This is what the scripture has to say to us tonight. It says, woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel. Uh oh, that means you're listening to other people's opinions now. Uh oh, that means that you're trusting in what man say versus what God say. Uh-oh, that means you're looking at the circumstance. Uh-oh, that means that you're looking at what people have to say about what God has told you to do. Uh-oh, that means that you're leaning into logic more than you're leaning into the spirit. Hello, verse one. Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. The first sin was that you trusted in, in the man. The second sin was that you didn't believe what the Lord had told you. Let's read that one more time. It said, woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. Listen, you got to be careful what you choose to cover yourself with, because everything that you choose to cover yourself with is not covered in God's spirit. I'm going to say it again. Everything that you try to cover yourself with is not covered in God's spirit. Amen. And so it says that they may add sin to sin. Let's read verse two here. It says that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Watch this. Therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. Listen, when you trust in anything else other than the most high God, you're going to end up confused. You're going to end up bewildered. You're going to end up running around like you have no common sense at all. You're going to end up a confused man. Why? Because you've chosen to trust in something and look to something that is not Jesus. Therefore, now you're operating in delusion. That means that you're crazy. And so, we look at this, it says, keep your eyes on Jesus. And so I want to read verse number 29, back to Matthew chapter 14. He says, and he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous and he was afraid, and he was afraid and began to sink, he cried saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, where did thou doubt? And so we know that when Jesus was walking on the water, they got scared. When Jesus was walking on the water, he called Peter out because Peter said, Lord, if it be you bid me to come, Jesus said, come on. And see, as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he's okay. And I want to encourage you tonight, as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus, you're going to be all right. I'm encouraging myself. You're going to be all right. It don't matter what it looked like. It don't matter what it don't matter what the banks say. It don't matter what people say. What does God say? And I want you to ask yourself tonight this question. What does God say concerning my situation? What does God say regarding my circumstance? And I want to take you back to the third point. I want to take you to the third point, which is do not fear and do not doubt. Do not fear and do not doubt. Listen, again, if God said it, it's going to happen. And if, and if God said it, it's going to happen, whoo, it's going to happen. Listen, he's not a man that he should lie and he's not the son of man that he should repent. Let me go ahead and share one more scripture to back that up with you. Let's go to Isaiah 55 because some of y'all still may not have understood it, but let me take you to another scripture so that we can get a solidified understanding. We can get a solid understanding of what this says here. Isaiah chapter 55. And I want to take you over to verse number. Da, 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 what am I looking for? Isaiah chapter 55. And I believe we are going to go to verse number uh, 11. Verse number 11. It says, 
so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So it don't matter what people say, you know, but what does the Lord say? He said that his word does not return to him void. And, and, and watch this. Yes, we have the Bible, but let me share something else with you. When, when we look at, when we look at, he says, so shall my word that be, that goeth forth out of my mouth. If God has said something and God has told you that he's going to come through on something, then let's, let's read verse 11 again. Let's read this in the spirit, y'all. Let's read this in the spirit. It says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Now, let's tie this together. I'm going to connect the dots. Let's go back to the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look here. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? We can just look, listen, we can just end that right there. If God said it, that's final, period, point blank, period. It does not matter. And yes, you know, it does not mean that it's always going to be comfortable. You know, sometimes you'd you be sitting in a place where anxiety would try to creep up. Or you'd be like Peter and you look around at your situation. But see, we're not moved by the situation because we got the problem solver standing right next to us. And that is Jesus Christ. And so I want to go ahead and encourage you tonight. Let's go back to one more scripture here. Verse number 33. It says, and, th and then they that were in the ship came and worshiped him, saying, of a truth, thou art the son of God. So watch this, because uh, I'm going to share something with you. So in verse 33, they acknowledge that he was the son of God, right? Verse number, if you go back to verse number, uh, verse number 27, it says, but straightway Jesus spake unto them saying, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. So watch this. Sometimes we get like Peter and sometimes we get like some of the other disciples. Sometimes we have a difficult time taking God at his word. Sometimes I say it again. Sometimes we have a difficult time taking God at his word. He said that if he said it, it would make it good. But see, he had to he had to bid Peter to come on the water and Peter had to sink. And, you know, Jesus had to save him and all that good stuff. And then they said, thou art truly the son of God. And I want to encourage you tonight to take God at his word. Believe in what it is that he has said to you. Jesus, and I'm, and I'm preaching to myself now. Jesus, when he, was in, when he was in his hometown, there were certain things that he could not do because of their unbelief. Mm, watch this. Mm, thank you, Lord. Don't let your unbelief cause God to stop moving on your behalf. Come on now. Don't let your unbelief block your blessing now. Believe in what the Lord has said. And I'm building myself up in the faith as I'm teaching this lesson tonight. Amen. Build yourself up in the faith because we're entering into a time where we need faith. I know we needed faith 10 years ago. We needed faith Five years ago, hey, I get it. But look at, if you look at what's going on around you, amen, and you look at what is happening in our society today, that represents the waves, the waves that's going to and fro, that's rocking the boat. You know, we don't like the boat rock because when the boat rocks, it's uncomfortable. Come on now. When the boat is rocking, watch this. We need to be rocking with Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I want to take you to one more scripture. Let's go to the book of Mark. The book of Mark chapter 
uh, the book of Mark chapter 11. That's where I want to take you. Thank you, Lord. Mark chapter 11 and verse number 22, 23, and 24. It says, and Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me put some light on that. Now, that don't mean, you know, for y'all that, you know, somebody made you mad or whatever that may be. That doesn't mean that you pray for their downfall because God's not going to answer that prayer. You know, God, God is not going to answer that prayer. Um, but what you can pray is that God touched their heart. What you can pray is that God will strengthen them, that God will help them. Because sometimes, you know, when those things happen, people don't know that they're behaving a certain way. And sometimes they do. But what did Jesus tell us to do? Jesus told us to love them. Jesus told us to pray for those that despitefully use us. Pray for those that mistreat us. And so I want to encourage you that even in the boat, when we're in the boat, as long as we're with Jesus, it's going to be okay. And so, you know, for some of us, myself included, we're in the boat right now. And we see all of these things that, you know, are going on around us. But when we look at Jesus, he's saying, come on. We say, we have that doubt in our heart. We say, Lord, if it's you, make this and that happen. Lord, if it's you, bid me to come walk closer with you. He's saying, come on. He wants a relationship with you. He loves you very much. The Bible speaks plainly. It speaks so clear. The Bible, I'm going to tell you something about the Bible, man. The Bible is, it's not a hard book to understand, but we must receive it as children. We must receive the instructions of the Lord as a little child. Amen. And so Jesus loves us. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And for some of us, Jesus has been knocking on our hearts for a long time. He said that the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. And many people have hardened their heart towards Christ. Um, and many people, and I'm going to share something else with you. Many people don't love the truth. Let me share with you what happens when you don't love the truth. You know, you, you know, you walk in your own way for a little while. You may think that you're doing something, but what ends up happening is God actually ends up giving you over to the lusts of your heart. He ends up, I didn't say the desires of your heart, I said the lusts of your heart. He ends up giving you over to the your, your reprobate mind. He ends up giving you over to a strong delusion. God is in control of everything. Those last two points that I made, I want to prove that to you. And I'm going to give you the scriptures. You can look them up uh, when you get home. I want you to read Romans chapter one. Read the whole chapter. Read Romans chapter one. And then I want you to read Second Thessalonians chapter two, verses nine through 12. Um, and so you'll see that it was God that gave them over to strong delusions. It was God that gave them over to all of these ungodly things. Why? Because when he was knocking on their heart, when he wanted a relationship with them, they rejected him. They rejected him. Jesus died on the cross so that whosoever would believe would not perish, but have everlasting life. Listen, it was never God's will for us to die and go to a place called hell that was not prepared for us. But because of our disobedience, hell enlarges itself daily, 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 y'all. What does daily, listen, what does daily sound like? Daily, meaning that people dying and going to hell every single day. But see, you don't have to die and go to hell. You can accept Jesus into your life. You can uh, uh, live for him. He died, watch this. He died for you so that you can live for him. He died for you so that you can live for him. He doesn't want to destroy you. 
If the Bible says it's not God's will that any man perish, but that all come to repentance. He died on the cross. He was buried and he rose on the third day with all power in his hand. And listen, with that being said, if he's knocking on your heart and if he's talking to you, he's just waiting for you to respond. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and say a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now to say thank you, Lord God. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your love, your kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. God, I come to you, Lord God, asking you, Lord God, to help us to walk with you, Lord God, even when we're in a storm, even when things are uncomfortable, Lord God. Lord God, I know that for us, Lord God, we may not see everything that you're doing, but we know that your hand is in our situation and your hand is on our life. And we thank you, God, for everything that you're going to do for us. Lord, as your word tells us, it says eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard and neither has it entered into the hearts of men. The good things that you have in store for them that love you. And God, we love you. Lord God, we want to do your will. We want to obey you. Lord God, we pray and ask that you will just lead us and guide us in the right way. It is our prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Let me go ahead and read this benediction and we're going to get on out of here. Amen. The book of Numbers, chapter six and verse 22, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Listen, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. I pray that everybody stays safe during this time. And listen, if you need prayer, if you like what you heard, you can share it out. I'm going to go ahead and upload this to YouTube over the weekend as well. But I pray and ask that you guys uh, continue to just fight the good fight. Listen, we're, we're fighting an enemy that never sleeps. And some, sometimes we're fighting an enemy that we can't even see. But watch this. On the same token, we serve a God that never sleeps. And we also serve a God that will never leave us. And with that being said, I pray you all have a blessed night. May the Lord bless you.